Hello, this is April with Craft Knife Chronicles, and I'm here to share my version of Laura Carson's Haunted Village. It's the Artfully Musings 2015 Halloween event. This was a fantastic project, and if you haven't seen the original version on the Artfully Musing website, make sure to check out the link in the description below. Laura has tutorials and handouts and lots of info and photos. I made only about half of what Laura designed for this project. There are more buildings plus a large 3D manor. So I'm just going to show you the buildings that I made, each one of them, and how I put them together and talk about any unique features that I added. So let's get started. In front of me here I have all the pieces of the Happy Bat Tavern that you just saw the pictures of. And what I want to show you is how it goes together. Now I did this so that it can take up a small amount of room when it's stored as possible. And a lot of the things are put together with magnets. That was a magnet that just went there. And you can see that this kind of has a hinge on it. It has a Tyvek hinge so that it kind of helps it uh, stand up and also gives a nicer look from the back. And then we also have the Happy Bat Tavern sign. This is on a skewer. And there's a stirrer straw right underneath this bottom row of shingles that that little skewer can fit into. And that's the same thing for this little owl that goes on the top. There is a little stir straw up here and get him facing the right way. There we go. That little owl fits in there. And then over here on the front there's a magnet underneath the roof here and this little sign that says fresh blood beer served here can go right there and then there's a magnet behind this arch doorway and the proprietor can be attached there and then the tree it actually attaches with a magnet on the back here but part of it comes and it attaches to the front. You can see right here there's a magnet underneath the roof and then as I flip this over there's a magnet right here that holds that in place. Now m many of these objects are held in place permanently. They're pretty flat and now I have a shelf here uh, with some digital images and some actual images and there's some magnets here that hold that shelf in place. And then we come to the bar. And the bar is a little unique because it has this lid that comes off. You can see it has a space in the middle. And there's a hole in the back here that you can reach in and push up and all of the items that are on the bar are attached there and then this can fit down inside just a little bit and then this frame goes back on and that protects all the little items and gives it a place to store and then this just attaches with some magnets. So that's how the building can stand up and you get an idea of the three-dimensionality of it there. Probably stands, oh, about oh, a couple inches thick I would say. 
And then here on the front, there's a little flap here that has a magnet for this little dude. He can sit there and it's tilted like that so that when it's sitting upright, his he's sitting on one of these little uh, stools. And then this dude also, there's a magnet behind here, and he can attach there. And then the three stools just get interspersed here. So that's how the Happy Bat Tavern goes together. Next we have the Retching Toad Eatery. Don't you just love the names that Laura came up with for these buildings? I think they're a hoot. Anyway, here on the front facade, pretty much everything is attached here. But you may notice that there's a shutter on this side, but there isn't a shutter over here. And that's because the shutter is attached to this tree. The tree is pretty lacy as I think you can see if I hold it over here and so in order to give it some support and make it so it can come off I took the shutter off and that has some magnets behind here which can attach right there and then on the back The main focal point is the fireplace and inside of this fireplace there's some chains that are holding this little pot suspended and there's a couple little layers of fire here so that the pot can actually look like it's in the flames there. And then up here on the top I hope you can see there's some little dowels of different sizes that are poking out. And what those are for is to hold some of these items that go on the top. These are dim, dig, most of these are digital images and they just have little alphabet beads that have holes in the bottom that slip over these posts. And that's how they stay on there. And then in the middle we have some salted worms. And then over here well, some sort of creepy candle and some skeleton hands, I guess. So that's what goes on the top of the fireplace. And then this is the table. There's one item that's permanently attached here. This little plate with some eyeballs and some uh, silverware and then there's also some little dowels sticking out of there um, but in the bottom there's a little box and inside of the box are the legs for the table and so I think you can hopefully see here there's a a uh, little boxed in corner on each, uh, each, each corner is a little box and the, the legs just kind of fit in there with friction. And then we have some more items to go on here some pickled eyeballs. I just made this out of a piece of bubble tree straw and a little wooden piece. And a digital image. And just a little wooden bowl that has a little skull in there. And that's the table. And then 
This is the top shelf. It has just some bottles that are filled with different things. And hanging from that, there's a little hook here so that this skull chandelier can hang from that. And it goes there. And then let's see. I'll put the skeleton and these zombie beads on once we get it upright here. So the top shelf goes on with a magnet up here at the top. Sorry, up there at the top. And then the zombie beads, they just hang over this one of the little um, prongs up there at the top. And then this shelf fits over here. And then it has a tall stake there that it's a little undignified, but that's what holds the, the skeleton up so that he can perch on the edge of the shelf there. And then the fireplace goes on with some magnets. And then this table also will go on with some magnets. So then it stands up. That's about what it looks like. And a couple of other items that go in the front. This is the sign that says Roadkill Serve Fresh Daily. And I just made a little base for it that has a slot so that it can fit in here and stand up. And then this is just a little sandwich board with a hinge on the top so that can stand out in the front. So that's the Retching Toad Eatery. Next we have Cadaver and Digger Undertakers. This is kind of a large building. The facade actually has two parts. And there's a, some large magnets underneath here. And it fits together like this. And then let's look at this little coffin mobile here. It's just a chipboard coffin, and uh, Laura designed this. I think I made it backwards. I think the wheels are supposed to go on the other end, because mine doesn't want to stand up too well. So I just made a little stake to go here in the bottom to give it some support there. And then um, this little half zombie guy, half skeleton, uh, holds on to the handle there. That's how that will work. That will go in the front. Just put that off to the side for now. And then also in the front, I've got another one of these signs that can just slide together here. And then if we flip around here and look at what goes on in the interior. You can see some things are permanently attached here. And then we have this arch. It's about an inch thick. It gets attached here. That's kind of the, the main support for the piece. There, up here there's uh, one of those sticks. And just like we had in the toad eatery, uh, but this is for a larger skeleton, can sit up here on the side of the arch. And 
Then a couple of coffins and to save space I just made one of these so that it opens up so that the little one can get stored inside. All of these things were from digital image uh, sheets that either were specially designed for this project or had been designed for previous projects. And then we have this little bench and move this up here so you can see there's some sticks coming out of the top here as well and all the little pieces that go on the top can be stored inside here. That fits on there and then this skull slides on the slanted one and then we just have some digital images of chemicals that would be used in the undertaking business that again have the little beads and slip on top there. And so when this stands up, this gets magnetized over here. And then this skull acts as kind of a bookend for a couple of headstones that can prop behind it. And this is just uh, another digital image that I backed with a chipboard and put a little 3 8 inch wooden block there so it could just stand up here in the corner. Here's a little shovel. The only thing I did with that is put some alcohol ink on it so it wouldn't look brand new. Sometimes it wants to jump up and attach to one of the magnets. And let's see, oh, I forgot about these two gargoyle looking, looking things. They there's some um, of the stir straws up here on the top of the uh, two turrets. And they have the skewers so that they can be attached at the top. And then I've just made some ghosts. And these ghosts, there's plenty of places they can just kind of tuck in and hang out. They don't have to go in any special place. And in fact, I think I'm going to make a few more just to go in the, um, in, in the village because it is haunted. So it needs more ghosts. So that is... the Cadaver and Digger Undertakers. Next we have the Thrifty Witch, and here is the main facade, and it has this little flap here, has some magnets, and it is actually the side of this little section of the building. This fits right inside of there, snaps in there, so that creates that. Now this piece of the fence over here is permanently attached, but on, I'm going to take this off for a second so we can see a couple other things. This piece of fence that goes on this side there has, there's actually, I hope you can see here, there's a slot. It's like a little pocket door. And this can fit inside. And depending on how much room you have to display, you can have it that far out or you can bring it out further. And 
And then on this side, I have a little palmistry sign. It's double sided, but there's a magnet down here in the bottom. Let's see if I can make it snap. Snaps together. And so it can just slide over this fence and sit wherever you want it to because those strong magnets will hold it together. And this, then this moon lamp, it actually has, see if we can see it on here, I'll pull it apart a little bit. See there's a slot inside of here. There's a little wood strip at the bottom, and then there's wood up here further to give it some stability. But it has enough of a slot so that it can fit over this fence on this side. And I should have put the other side on first. There we go. And that can, now it can stand right there and be seen from both sides. Okay, so now let's put this back together again. There we go. Okay, so we'll come around here to the inside. And because this has some depth to it, I made a little window box. I have to fix these labels. I need to put some glossy accents or something on to hold those labels on there. And the main feature on the inside is this cabinet. It has some digital images and then some three-dimensional um, three-dimensional objects and this is actually from the um, Black Cat Emporium project but I really liked it and I couldn't make all the projects so I decided to make that for this one it was a pretty loud snap it has some serious magnets on it and then up on the top here I don't know if you can see it's black on black. There's some dowels sticking up here to hold a clock, this uh, owl, and a crystal ball go up there on the top. And let's see. Yeah, I guess we can go ahead and put those up on here. So there's the crystal ball. The clock actually has two little... Little, little beads on it so it fits right there and then this owl it has two beads as well and it slides right on there okay so part of my reach I forgot when we were looking at the front that the main logo sign goes on here. It's not meant to be tipped over, of course, so things keep falling. So, and then I put the, the witch on a skewer, and then up on this finial, there's another one of the stirrer straws, so that can slide right in there. And let's see. Now we're just down to accessories. Put this back here a little bit. So this is just how Laura made made um, a, a, this little tripod with uh, eyeball beads and some glossy accents, and then um, I just made the sign removable on the top, and then. For the pumpkin pets, I took a little matchbox, just a one you get at the grocery store, and then took some strips of one sixteenth inch by quarter inch wood and just used some stain on them to make it look like a wood box. And then in the bottom, 
I've got two layers here of chipboard and then a cutout that matches a cutout that's on the top of this um, wooden piece so that it just kind of fits in there and now that can stand three-dimensionally and just takes up less space when it's you know like this and less likely to get damaged too. And then lastly, um, uh, Laura made this too. Uh, it's just a candlestick that holds some little brooms because there's a broom sale going on in the store. So that is the Thrifty Witch. Here are all the parts and pieces for Ghoul and Sons Chemists. And the main facade is separate from this dormer. It just snaps into the, fits inside of the roof there. And I should say that for all these buildings, I do have magnets in the bases of these pieces so that there could be a floor um, or a sidewalk area. And this is the first one where probably I will make that because this piece that's in the front here is um, a little bit heavy and it it does balance but it's a it's a little precarious. It has this skull is heavy and I'm going to show you the really cool thing about that skull in a second. And um, I'll put this on but then I'll take it off so it won't fall off. This is a rusted metal fence here, and I've put some magnets behind here so that it can stick on this side. And then just another small piece can come and stick on that side as well. So those things happen. And then out in the front, we just have a sandwich board sign. And then this sign is on a stirrer stick and it just fits inside of a spool to stand out um, by itself. And then for the inside, we have a cabinet with all sorts of potions. Some of these are actual bottles and some are digital images. The front of this cabinet comes off. There's just some magnets sitting down inside of here. And then this is the top shelf that fits on top of this unit and just snaps there with some magnets. And then this is the table. It's similar to the bar in the Happy Bat Tavern, the way it goes together like, you know, flips like that to store its things. And then it also has similarities to the um, table in the Retching Toad Eatery because it has uh, legs. And I just made these legs by I had some uh, plastic tubing that I cut to length. I think you can see that that's hollow tubing. It may not look hollow. I just put a little plug on the ends so that when these little pieces of dowel that are the legs, they need a stopper so that they won't, you know, they don't go up too far. So that is the legs. And then 
that fits on there and then just like we had in the Happy Bat Tavern that fits on there and it's sized so that it fits right on there and this is just a little metal hand I had in my stash that there happens to be a magnet sitting right there so it was like perfect and then the um, see you can't pick up the the coffin because the legs fall out um, but it works anyway there's magnets that hold that on but I want to show you the really cool thing here I'll just take this off for a second and that is this hole up here it's usually covered up by this clock but you can get in here to access a switch and the batteries and you see those glowing eyes little red LED eyes that are inside of that skull isn't that cool that little LED set comes from uh, alphastamps.com and Laura showed how to drill out uh, holes for the skull so that he could have lit up eyes. I just love that. So, and then the clock goes on there to hide the workings. And we'll put the cabinet on here. Get my legs stuck back in here. And that has some magnets to hold it on. Get the cabinet front back on. Then we have a little bucket that I just colored with some alcohol inks with a, a brain inside of it that's an eraser. And here's Mr. Ghoul himself. I just printed out uh, two copies of the digital image and one in reverse and put a couple little 3 8 inch wood blocks down there so that he can stand up there. So that is the chemist shop. And then when Halloween is over, it can all be packed away in one box. This box is about 6 inches tall by 14 inches long by 10 inches wide. And it has room to spare, you'll see here. Over on this side, I have all of the facades stacked up. And I have room to put some of that thin foam in between them. Then the cabinet from the Thrifty Witch can sit there. I've got some of the pieces over here you can see. And then I just put some of the smaller things in baggies so that they don't get lost in here. And then down here on the bottom some of the heavier things. And yeah, the little little some of the some things are loose in here right now. The brain bucket, I might put those in a bag. But yes, everything fits nicely in here. There's even a little room to spare in case I want to make something else. And then over here on the side, I've got the trees and the moon and the ghosts so they can stay nice and flat and protected I hope you've enjoyed up here taking a look at my version of Artfully Musings Haunted Village. It sure was a lot of fun to make. I always so enjoy making projects that put Laura away Carson designs. Until it's time for this next is April year. with Craft Knife Chronicles. Thanks for watching. Happy Halloween. Bye for now.